All right, shalom, shalom, Rastafari. So let's get into this right here. We're going to deal with Daniel's prophecy in this 2012 and the signs that we're seeing in this particular year from a scriptural prophecy. In a Rastiadinos Tefari, I am Wendem Yadon for the line of Judah Society of His Imperial Majesty, and we're broadcasting presently on the Ethiopian World Net. And you can join us on the Facebook at Ethiopian World Net. Now, what we want to address first, we've seen some very interesting and dramatic um, prophetical signs. Some of our people, and even ourselves, had to ask, is the signs that we see a conspiracy of man, or is it an act of God concerning the recent deaths and reports of the deaths of the Ethiopian Archbishop, um, whom they call Abuna Paulos or Archbishop Paulos Gebremedin, as well as of the Ethiopian um, Prime Minister uh, Melis Zenawi. Now, one thing is interesting is that when we turn our Bibles, first of all, if we would look into uh, the prophecy, right, because it says that the Almighty, that God does not do a thing unless he first, you know, shows this to his servants, to those who are his servants, who are the prophets. So we see in the scriptures, in the Old Testament, in the, in the, in the Tanakh, it's called the Tanakh or the Nabim, the, the prophets, the Nabim, in the Old Testament. You go to Daniel, let's go to Daniel, let's begin off here with, um, first of all, let's put in, these three countries. Now, this is 2012, right? We have the Blue Letter Bible, and we're using this as a as a as a visual reference for where we're going to be studying. All right. So get your pen and paper, your sacred scripture, and bring a willing and attentive mind with a love of truth, a love of the truth. This means that this is not per se our personal. This is not our personal opinion about this. We're not seeking to interpolate, read into the interpretation, but just look at the interpretation, look at this year, and look at these dramatic signs that we have seen in 2012. So let's first of all look up um, um, Libya, right? Let's put uh, Libya, right? Um, actually, let's see, Libya right here, right? Let's put Libya, right? Um, let us put Egypt, right, and let us put Ethiopia, right, into the search, right, in the Bible search, right. So we have Libya, Egypt, and Ethiopia, and here we are in the blue letter, right, and this, they, they're going through a, a series um, on the blue letter Bible with the names of God in the Old Testament, now they're on Kana, Kana. Right, Kana, um, um, which would mean the the zealous, the zealous or the jealous God. Right, he says, "I am a zealous or translated as jealous God." All right, so let us uh, click on the search right here. All right, let's click on the search. Um, give I and I a moment. Now we know where we're gonna probably go to right here in this search, uh, because we've already done this particular search. Right. Um, and we've already we're familiar with it. Many of you are probably familiar with these particular verses right here in the scriptures, right? So let's bring this up. Right, let's bring this up right here, Blue Letter Bible, right? So as you can see right here, the KJV, right, or the King James uh, version, the Concordance for Libya, Egypt, and um, Ethiopia. Right, Ethiopia, right, um, Libya, Egypt, and Ethiopia. Here, there's two verses, right? Let's click on these two verses. Now, I think it says Libyans, actually, in the translation. So we have these verses right here, right? But then there's Libyans. Now, you see, these are some prophecies right here, Ezekiel 30 and 5 and 38 and 5, right? And many who are familiar with these end times um, uh, prophecies and who have interpreted them, let us put Egypt and Ethiopia, because it's Libyans. That's why it's not coming up right here, but Libyans. So we see there are eight particular verses. Now, what's the first one right here? 
The first one we should be well familiar with, which is princes, Mekwan and Kagibit, you wet alu, ejop ia, ejochua, wet egziabi zargalich, which is princes shall come out of Egypt, right? Princes shall come out of Egypt and Ethiopia, right? Shall soon stretch out her hands to God. Now we know this is a very relevant and prophetic verse when we are speaking of Ethiopia in the context of our divine heritage as Ethiopian Hebrews, right? Now, there, there are other verses right here in Isaiah 20 and 3. It says, And the Lord Yahweh, Baruchu, said, Blessed be he, he said, Like as my servant Isaiah, right? Isaiah hath walked naked, and there for three years for a sign and a wonder upon Egypt and Ethiopia. Right? So Egypt and Ethiopia, Isaiah 20 and 3. And 20 and 5 it says, And they shall be afraid and ashamed of Ethiopia, their expectation. So who is this speaking of? It's speaking of the Israelites, the true Israelites, the true black Israel. Speaking of I and I and I and I people, the careless Ethiopians, the lost sheep, so-called Negroes, blacks, and colored. When we speak about Ethiopia, the only thing about is starving children, you understand, or scenes of famine that the media, you understand, has has broadcasted, you understand, repeatedly over and over. But that's that's not even half of the story. More than half of the story is still unknown to the majority of ones who who are under the media the media mind control, if you when just looking at TV and not doing your own study and research. But it says here, which is interesting, and they, who are the they, shall be afraid and ashamed of Ethiopia, their expectation, and of Egypt, their glory. One time the black folks were ashamed to make this connection with Ethiopia and Egypt, and even were believed that Egypt was white or European. You understand that that lie is still out there among um, the remnant of of white supremacy and and, and a lot of uh, um, extremist sort of European Anglo American groups. You understand that they speak about a so called white Egypt, so forth and so on. They even say that the Ethiopians, very interestingly enough, in some of the older material out there, there's a vid that we've posted that we have and it's out there. It calls the Ethiopian um, dark skinned Aryans. You know, since a lot of that is psychobabble, but we have to address that because that is the context that we find this disinformation. Right, that's the context in which we find this particular um, disinformation out there. But let's but, but let us go further, right, in our biblical study. These are not our main verses. We are getting to it, right? Then it says in Isaiah forty three and three, it says, "For I am, or for I Yahweh, thy God, right, thy Elo, thy Elohe, Elohai." The Holy One, the Kedus, right, the Kaddish, the Kedus of Israel, thy Savior, the Savior, the Shua, the Yeshua, right? I gave Egypt for thy ransom and Ethiopia and Seba or Seba for thee. Now, it's interesting when we look at Seba and Sheba or Saba, that is linked with what we call Yemen. I don't know if you've seen that picture where Gaddafi... Um, the the former um, president, the prime minister, or whatever of of of, of uh, Yemen, and um, uh, Mubarak, the former um, prime minister for all these years, or the pharaoh of of Egypt, the modern um, pharaoh of Egypt, where they all were hugging each other. It's, it's a very interesting kind of picture. But here it says that the Lord, our God who is the Holy One, the Caduce of Israel, who is our Savior, that he says that he has given Egypt, right, Egypt for our ransom. So when we think, well, how come they control all of this um, ancient Egyptian art and facts? You understand, isn't it black? Why isn't it all these European museums all over the world? Mm-hmm. Why do the Europeans seem to claim ownership of this. 
material? Why is Egypt right now, those in Africa, why is it under the, the domination and the infestation of so-called pale red Arabs, Bedouins, and how come the native people that the art and facts depict are not the people you see on a daily basis, you understand, in Egypt, in that region? Because when you understand the bigger picture, you recognize that for us, for Israel, black Israel, and the remnant that we have in Ethiopia and the, and the monarchy, and Karamawi, Haile Selassie is significant, Haile Selassie I, it says that Egypt was given for our ransom, right? And, and then you give a ransom when someone has been taken hostage, as the lost sheep, as we the lost sheep have been taken hostage for our ransom. And Ethiopia it says, and Sheba or Saba, Seba, for thee. Now that thee there is speaking of black Israel. I want you to understand that, my brothers and sisters. But let's go further. 45 and 14. It says, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, to him be the praise, the labor of Egypt, the, and merchandise of Ethiopia, and the Sabians, men of stature, shall come over to thee, and they shall be thine. This is why we have the, the exile. So many of the Ethiopians are in exile in, in the Americas and, and in, in, in Europe and in England in particular, but many of them, the majority of them, you understand, in the Americas, you understand, these have come over to us, but many of them being careless and being under lies and, and, and deception, especially since the godless and creeping coup against Kedemawi Haile Selassie, you understand, the Illuminati conspiracy against his imperial majesty. Many of them don't know really the truth. This is why when we get into these um, reasonings and even arguments or a few of the debates that we have been in, um, with some of these careless Ethiopians, they don't even recognize most of this truth until they study it for themselves. You understand? But look at what the prophetic word says. It says that they shall come over, right, to thee. You understand? They have come from Ethiopian exile over here. Many of them have um, um, given up their Ethiopian citizenship. You understand? To become Americans, so forth and so on. And we have to understand that the dynamic. There's a dynamic there. So when we're speaking to these and those, you might, they might say, I'm Ethiopian, but what you don't know is that they've become an American citizen, and therefore they had to renounce their Ethiopian citizenship. They had to renounce their, their birthright. You know what I'm saying? But they've come over here, you know what I'm saying, to live like the, the Huxtables, in other words, to live like so-called middle and upper middle class black people. You know what I'm saying? And even in many of these areas. Yovas, but this is this is an important part of the prophecy right here. And they shall be thine. You understand? They shall be thine. They shall come after thee, right? In chains, spiritual chains, spiritual bondage here. They shall come over and they shall fall down. You understand? To thee. They shall make supplication to thee, saying, Surely God, Jah, Rastafari, surely the true and living God is in thee, is in I and I and I. I and I bear that witness of the truth of his majesty, of the half of the story that has not been told. This is where the whole Rastafari movement, this is like the crux of the cross of this particular matter right here. And it says right here, surely Jah is in thee, Jah is in I and I, and there is none else. There is no God. In other words, God is in I and I. And there's no other true and living God but the King of Kings and his Christ. Now, if we go further to, um, if we go further to uh, uh, Ezekiel 29 and 10, it says, Behold, therefore I am against thee and against thy rivers. I will make the land of Egypt utterly waste. That's what we see there. It's utterly wasted. You understand? It's, it's utterly wasted and desolate, desolate of the true and native Carmites, the true and native black people. You understand? The, 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 the ones on the monuments and, and the wall paintings, right? From the Tower of Siyin, which is Aswan, this is Aswan, Siyin or Siyin, right? Siyin, Aswan, right? 
even to the border of Ethiopia. Very interesting, the border of Ethiopia. So we can see the geography that his Kiel, Ezekiel was looking at, or Ezekiel was looking at. In 30 and 4, it says, And the, what sword shall come upon Egypt, and great pain shall be in Ethiopia. And when the slain shall fall in Egypt, and they shall take away her multitude, and her foundations, right? If the foundations be destroyed, what can the Khan, what can the righteous do? Shall be broken down. So now when we look at Ethiopia today, when we look at recent history, mm -hmm, we can begin to clearly recognize from the prophecy what is really behind the matter. You understand the truth, the biblical, the prophetic truth behind this matter. Now, the foundations are broken down. You understand the foundations since 74, 75 are broken down. That's what we speak about, the restoration of the true divine monarchy of the King of Kings and his Christ. Nahum, in Nahum 3 and 9, it says, Ethiopia and Egypt were her strength, and it was, and it was infinite. Put or foot, some say Somalia, some link foot with Somalia, right? And uh, Lubin were her helpers, foot and Lubin. Now, as I recall right here, um, the verse that we're looking for, it says that, that the Ethiopians, right, the Ethiopians shall be at her steps, uh, at, his, at his steps, you could, uh, at his steps. So let's turn our Bibles right here as we pull this up to Daniel 11 and uh, 40, 11 and 43. And let's look at this prophecy that is revealed to us in this particular year right here, right, 2012, right? Now there's five verses for Egypt and the Ethiopians. By right, Second uh, Chronicles 12 and 3, um, Isaiah um, 20 and 4, which is interesting. It says, so shall the king of Assyria lead away the Egyptians as prisoners. Assyria's in the news too, you know. And the Ethiopians captive, young and old, naked and barefoot, even with their buttocks uncovered to the shame of Egypt. This is also a prophetic verse speaking about our captivity and enslavement that led to our enslavement in these western lands of the North Country, the Americas and the Caribbean. Now in Ezekiel 20 and 9, right, Ezekiel 20 and 9 it says, In that day shall messengers go forth from me. The Almighty is saying from him he will send forth his own messengers of the true gospel of the King of Kings and his Christ in ships to make the careless Ethiopians, right? See, there's, there's a careless right there. The careless Ethiopians afraid. And great pain shall come upon them. Great pain. We see this in the Red Terror after the godless and creeping coup, after the great transgression against the King of Kings, after the Illuminati conspiracy against his imperial majesty, we see the, a, 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 a manifestation of this great pain. Is that all that there is, or is there more to come? It says, as in the day of Egypt, the day of Egypt. Now this year, what's very interesting, this year has witnessed in, 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 dramatic, in dramatic style, in 2012, the day of Egypt, the day in which a so-called popular revolution um, ousted the 40 or so year, 30 to 40 year um, um, uh, domination of Mubarak, right? All in this year, 2012. So we have to connect these dots you know, of the prophetic prophecy, right? And, 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 and the Bible, the scriptures, being guided by the Holy Spirit in the true and faithful, you know what I'm saying, in Yeshua. You know what I'm saying? It shows us now what we're seeing. And this is why we're sharing this with you. For lo, for look, behold, you understand? It cometh. This vision is being fulfilled, right? Now in Daniel 11 and 43, 
right? Let's just scroll over 11 and 43. Go, let's go to Amos 9 and 7, right? Amos 9 and 7. Are ye not as children of the Ethiopians to me, O children of Israel? Who is it speaking to? Why does it compare the children of Israel, right? The children of Israel, not the state of Israel. You understand? Not Khazarian uh, converted Jews. You understand? Not the Rothschild Jews. You understand? Not even the Torah Jews. It's speaking about the children. You understand? Those racial, ethnic descendants, right? The children of Israel. Why does it compare them to the Ethiopians? Because they are black people. You see, that's the half of the story. That's why it says in Revelation, the whole world has been deceived. Because the majority of the world does not believe or accept I and I report. You know, saying they do not believe or accept it. They said, No, you you are not the you can't be the the the, the Judahites. You can't be the Jews. You cannot be you, you know, uh, there's no black Jew. There's no you know, blacks are not the Israelites. They can't be the Israelites, the Hebrews, the black Hebrew Israelites and all these black people think that they are they they must be crazy. But look what the word says. The word says that those who, who disagree with it are liars. It says, Are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians to me, O children of Israel, saith the Lord? So who is speaking here? It is Yahweh. You understand? He is comparing the children of the Ethiopians to him to the children of Israel. And if you study this in its context, as we can learn a lot by studying the word, it is actually comparing, right, the Israel children or the, the Bani Yisrael to the children of the Ethiopians. It's like if I, said to, if I had two wives, right, and I said to one wife, I said, aren't you like the other wife to me, Yovas? It's almost like saying, well, um, um, you are second and she is first. So in a sense, it's actually saying that Ethiopia was before Israel, if you really understand the contextuality. In addition to comparing, saying that there's some connection, there's a divine connection with the Ethiopians and Israel, right? Now, some would say, well, no, that's not it, because actually when it says down here, have not, have not I brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt and the Philistines from Kaf Tor, right, and the Syrians from Kerr, they're saying, well, it's just saying that the Lord delivers um, people, you know, he saves people, no, it's much deeper than that, you understand, it's much, and as we study the scriptures, even, even uh, Psalm 68, 31, he overs, or, 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 or Psalm um, 87, this man was born there, you understand, it, it's clear and we look at the, the, the historical, let's look at the testimony of the faithful Ethiopian, not the careless ones. Because the careless ones deny their very roots because they have sold themselves. You know what I'm saying? They have sold themselves into captivity. You know what I'm saying? They have sold themselves into captivity. Now let's deal with this verse right here. Let's deal with uh, Daniel or Daniel 11 and 43. Now Daniel 11 and 43, that's, this, is, this, is, this is the verse. This is the verse that is very, very illuminating and enlightening in this particular year. As we connect these particular prophetic, you understand, these prophetic dots. You understand? When we look in 11 and 43, it says, But he, right, but he shall have power over the treasures of gold and silver, and over all the precious things of Egypt, right? All the precious things of Egypt. Then there's a there's a colon right here. Now, some dismiss these these um, um, grammatical, punctuational marks, but they're very important in understanding the context of what's being said. You know, and since most of us are not reading this in the original language, but we're reading this in translation. You know what I'm saying? The, the translators, especially the King James, were more faithful than a lot of these newer translations, though the newer ones have some interesting things to say, you know saying, here or there. But we're referring to the King James Version, and in the King James Version, it's speaking of the treasures of gold and of silver. If you recall in the Arab Spring, 
that we witness and that the whole world witness. And we watch some of it on Al Jazeera. Very interesting, too, right there, right? Um, you remember when the, they said that there, there was looting going on in the Egyptian museum. And, and a lot of the, the so-called um, Egyptological community um, was, was very vocal about um, the, the danger of losing this, this, this precious archive, right? I mean, of, of, of artifacts, of art and facts. And if you look at these art and facts, they're gold and silver. These are precious treasures. So if you look at the Arab Spring and the events in the Arab Spring, right, and the precious treasures of Egypt, you recall when Obama first got elected, he went to Egypt and people immediately made a likeness to him right and the her sign the her sign the face sign because of his ears and they said look um there was a picture or there's a there's a there's an artifact or a hieroglyph in in one of the pyramids or in one of the egyptian treasures right that reflects or looks like a Obama. You remember that there was that big thing right there. If you go on the internet, look it up. You probably can still find some of the vids and some of the other pages and look at some of the pictures and the comparisons right there. All right. So there's a he being spoken of here, right? Is it an individual he? Who is this he right here? It says this he will have what power over the treasures of gold and of silver and over all the precious things of Egypt. So we get this, 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 this never before seen sort of revolution they say this is the first time in egyptian history and they're trying to connect the um the squatters in egypt today the Bedouins and the pale red arabs so forth and so on they're trying to connect their story with the ancient uh Kamite history which is which is afro shemitic black people african people you understand it's very clear look at any of the art in fact the, the real art in fact not the counterfeit not the fake. There's a lot of fake Egyptian art out there as well. So you might have to go to some of the older resources to really fact check which particular art. And if you look at some of the older pictures and some of the newer stuff, you'll find that there's been various changes made to the racial features and characteristics of the original Kamite or black Egyptians. And you have to ask yourself, why would they do that? You understand? Why would they do that? if it's already white? Why would they try to whiten it and lighten it and put out a lot of fake Egyptian art out there, even as not just the tourist stuff, we're not speaking about just the tourist stuff, but a lot of stuff has crept into pseudo-academic work. You know what I'm saying? But this is to point out this particular verse, 2012. We're in 2012. This is 2012, right? And from the beginning of this year, we saw what was going on with the Arab Spring. Right? So Egypt, this is a positive, you understand, a positive interpretation and connection with Egypt. All right? But it's not finished. The verse is not finished. The colon now explaining what all this says. It says right here, and the Libyans, right, Libyans, and the Ethiopians, Ethiopians, shall be at his steps. Now, what's interesting, if you were really paying attention to the details of what was going on in, in, in Gaddafi's Libya, <clears throat> You will see that there was a lot of uh, Ethiopians were crying about being persecuted and trying to flee to, to Europe, and a lot of African migrants also were there, and there were charges of racism going on um, against the, the black and African migrants, and, there's, and there was a big um, Ethiopian population, interestingly enough, that was in Libya. So some of us thought, well, maybe this Ethiopian shall be at his footsteps since it's the he being spoken of right there. Perhaps this was just speaking of the fact that there were Ethiopians who were trying to get out the country, were fearing persecution, you know, because they're black and so forth and so on. And there's this, still there's this racism between the, um, the modern uh, uh, invaders uh, the, the, the thieves who have stolen that land. You have to understand the history of Libya of North Africa. North Africa and Libya in, in the first century was Christian, were black Christians all throughout North Africa. You understand, was, was Christian. And before that, they were Judeo. They were Judaic. You understand, the people of the book. 
You know, and then there was this invasion that came in with the Ottoman Turks and with Islamism and the Islamo fashion and Mohammedanism of that day. This is why we also address the Mohammedan issue, the Islamo fascist issue as well. But let's continue with this verse right here. So we have, and the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. But lo and behold, brothers and sisters, what have we witnessed, right? And, you know, what have we witnessed in, in, in 